Hello everyone and welcome to episode 27 of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by the fabulous Jackie Winters of the British Academy of Crystal Healing. During this inspiring episode, Jackie shares how her own health challenges with severe stress-induced asthma led to her delving into the fascinating world of frequencies and how crystals are able to support the restoration of harmony in the natural frequencies of our own bodies. Wisdom imparted from a Neolithic rock in the Spanish mountains leads us on to consider the use of language in allowing us to reconnect with ancient wisdom. And through taking in the lay of the land, we explore how ley lines, nodes and sacred sites recognised by our ancestors still provide us places to reconnect to our innate power and re-energise ourselves. Jackie also shares some truly surprising examples of how understanding how we can work with and harness this energy can have profound benefits not just for ourselves but more importantly in helping to heal and uplift the land, environment and even our own communities. At a time when we are bombarded by negative dialogues and stories about the natural world, which are inducing many heavy emotions in all of us, we discuss the importance of intention and needing awareness of the emotions we are holding and carrying into our actions, as these unintended frequencies leave their own imprint on the land and our environment. Through compassion and with the support of crystals, we can learn to return to and hold the frequency of love in our hearts, which can allow us to be of even greater service in being the change we want to see in this world. Welcome, Jackie. It's really lovely to have you joining us today on this episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I'm really looking forward to talking with you more about your journey with crystals and vibrational healing. And um, But just to get started, I just ask all my guests a little bit, bit of an icebreaker, but to share a little bit about their nature story and perhaps what nature means to you or if you've got any fond memories of, of being out in nature. So if there's anything you'd like to share to get us started, that'd be lovely. Okay. Hi, Fiona. And thank you so much for inviting me. It's such an honour to, to be on your show. Um, so my um, fondness of nature is basically being in the mountains, being able to communicate with um, crystals and the rocks and mm. um, do it so through a non-verbal sort of communication. So one of the experiences that I had was when <clears throat> I used to live in Andalusia in the mountains. Oh, amazing. And, yeah, and um, I've always been able, been able to sense and see faces in the rocks. You know, a lot of people can, when you look at a mountain, you can make a shape out yeah. of something in the mountain um, and always sort of have that kind of thing going. And then I got introduced to Neolithic, rocks which are rocks that have got certain markings on and they've been there since oh such a long time the, the beginning Millennium. of time but yeah, yeah, yeah forever yeah and sitting me meditating at the top of the mountain one time I could hear the voice a voice coming to me from this Neolithic rock and I remember sitting there thinking is this me talking to me or am I actually hearing yeah some communication coming from this neolithic rock and it it spoke to me about understanding um the difference between illusions in our life and reality and yeah. and started to explain to me that you know we we live by stories stories dictate our emotional equilibrium you know when we hear somebody's stories we feel sad we feel happy we feel this and he said the rock was talking about how important it is to you know see reality for what it is obviously that's what I needed at that time yeah. but just sitting there having that experience at the top of a mountain I remember thinking oh my goodness everyone's going to think you're very strange Jackie <laughs> <laughs> sitting at the top of a mountain have a conversation with a Neolithic rock but I have to say it was 
the most beautiful experience ever mm. I absolutely love being in the mountains they're so calming and soothing and of course because you're so elevated you're above all the electromagnetic frequencies that yeah. we have to deal with down here um, and up there there's a, a peace and a calm that you can't always find when you live in a town or a city yeah and being elevated like that um for me when I was sitting on the mountain I could I could sense a snake um, which was quite a long way away from me and I could sense uh, the trees and yeah. you know ha you, you have a different type of communication and it helped me understand why um, I have a dog and the animals are always very fully present and the dog will bark when my husband's at the bottom of the road and I'm like what are you barking yeah. at and she <laughs> sensed him yeah and yeah. and your senses just become so much more alert but I think human beings are so wrapped up in everyday life that we yeah, don't we're always... so busy aren't we it's Absolutely. like we're bombarded by demands on us I guess really for want of a better word isn't it all the time and and so we we don't really have that space to very easily sort of be connected and open I think I talked to a guest a while ago and, and we were saying the same that there's when you go to the city there's so much bombardment on you that actually it's not surprising that people have become disconnected from the world around them because it's it's an overload they just couldn't cope with it if they tried to connect with everything in in the same way that you you described up on up on the mountains when you just have this much more pure experience and the resonance and the energy around you is just quieter and stiller and you just feel into these amazing abilities that I guess we all have don't we and and we just don't we don't connect with on a on a regular basis well one of the things I feel is that um we live in a uh, well I I live in the town now yeah. but you know we our senses are permanently being bombarded by electromagnetic frequencies yeah. by stimulants and it's very strange for us to live in the silence yeah. And so when we do get to live in the silence, we're almost looking for the stimulant. Yeah, it's we... almost uncomfortable, isn't it? It, it is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And I found that for me, when I sit in the silence, it does take me a while to get used to that nothingness that we're not used to in the kind of lifestyle that's been created for humanity yeah. that live in towns and cities. So, yeah, it's um, we it makes you realise that we're not as relaxed to the depth that we could be yeah because yeah. of all that bombardment of your senses you know there's always something to see there's always something to hear there's always something to you know and and our brain has become used to needing that stimulant almost you know now with the drug you know, you, isn't it yeah it's, yeah with yeah. social media we, we'll look at social media we don't sit and have conversations anymore we'll, you know yeah yeah, yeah it's, we live it's in strange an addiction times. isn't it it's, it, it is. really is yeah yeah, it's, absolutely... it's massively an addiction yeah. and for me getting up the mountain and um, the, the strange thing is though Fiona I have um a few heights oh wow okay <laughs> so actually getting to the top of a mountain is you know by itself no mean feat because once yeah. I'm up there it's great because you know I'm, I'm really comfortable but getting up there is sometimes a little bit um distressing for me yeah. I have to talk myself down it's like it's okay it's okay you're going to be fine but yeah. once you're up there the energy and the vibration is amazing and and from working with uh crystals because I've, I've had crystals in my life for such a long time that you know moving on to going to the top of the mountain and talking to a neolithic rock really it has taken me out of my comfort zone <laughs> I'm not gonna lie but has has made me realize that there's so much more to be achieved by connecting to nature yeah. by realizing that you know the the rocks are alive the plants are alive the planet is alive and uh you know i live a very shamanic kind of lifestyle okay. by appreciating nature and when i walk in the trees i talk to the trees and say hello <laughs> to them and are yeah. you doing well and greet them like know. friends yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. And the sensation that you get from, you know, treating everything with the massive respect that I feel we should do is yeah. that you feel this connection inside of you, this heartfelt connection that I think sometimes some people have lost that respect. We we have a an arrogance in the human mind that we are yeah. somehow superior to nature when in actual fact it is the total opposite way around. Nature yeah. is far superior to us.
Yeah, I think um, I was reading a book um, a while ago. I think it might have been one of Sharon Blackie's ones, actually, um, or possibly Braiding Sweetgrass. I'm not sure. But it was about how um, our language evolved, basically, with this um, basically pyramid, wasn't it, where human we placed humans at the top and it was actually down to a very few individuals in sort of philosophy and you know ancient cultures that when actually it serves our purpose to make everything disconnected and humans at the pinnacle and how that's pervaded through our language and become accepted but actually if you go back before those those individuals that we did live this much more um it was a sort of good I'm just gonna say connected but it's even more than that it was like yeah. a reverence for our part and being a part of the the world around us and and just being one part and we were on a level with the plants and the the animals and it is amazing to I think there is a resurgence isn't there I'm, or maybe it's just that I attract people like that but I feel like it is becoming much more mainstream a conversation that um we we talk about actually realizing that there is wisdom and knowledge within the beings around us the non-human beings whether that be plant animal even the rocks and and the earth and yeah. it's you know I that gives me hope for the future that this conversation is coming into the mainstream more and more and and people don't just immediately judge you like you said <laughs> what are people going to think when they hear you've been talking to a rock and um exactly. yeah and and really for me everything is frequency so when I got into crystals years ago I began to realize that I was hearing the frequency and interpreting the frequency of the energy and with crystals crystals have been used in science in radio stations the first radio station was a crystal set because it had a piece of galena in there okay. and the galena would change the frequency of the radio and every organ in your body has a frequency to it every sensation you have it has a frequency to it you know emotions are frequency based so everything is frequency based and because working with crystals for such a long time and like you said about the wisdom i've learned this from the crystal kingdom because just sitting and holding the crystal or this awareness of frequencies has been brought to my attention, um, even down to the math mathematical equations that, you know, I downloaded by holding a crystal and wrote oh, them wow. down wow. and then went onto the Internet and found eventually after doing quite a bit of scrolling and, and research that what I'd written down was actually correct and not being a mathematician on any oh, wow. level <laughs> wow yeah um, but you know it just shows that what you're saying is absolutely correct there is wisdom in nature and everything is a frequency every thought that was ever had is in the atmosphere it's a frequency that is still in yeah. the atmosphere I love I love that because for a lot of people I think they do still have this belief that it's a bit woo woo and because yeah. science has kind of shut it down and tried to shun it for so long but actually you know we accept certain things about frequency you know there's certain things in our lives that that have frequency and we're quite happy with that you know we're, you know like you said the the radio station tv signals you know even the wi-fi that we're now reliant on you know it's like these frequencies transmit through the air mm -hmm. and we're, we're quite happy to accept that but you know to to suggest that a crystal has frequency or a plant has crystal uh frequency or even ourselves you know our, like you said our own organs seems it seems so strange that we we find that so hard to 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 allow ourselves to believe really isn't it when actually we yeah. accept this notion of frequency in other places quite quite easily yes absolutely and you know if you go to the hospital and they want to test your the, the heart they use an ECG which is an electrocardiograph and that is actually testing the frequency yeah. of your heart so it is in science and it is in mainstream and why they want to keep it quiet yeah. and not explain because when I was working with some scientists they were explaining every organ in the body has its own particular frequency and when you're working with crystals what I've learned is certain crystals have a certain frequency that will restore harmony 
yeah. within certain areas of the body and understanding that frequency and how using a crystal to restore the harmony of that organ or whatever can then start to produce healthy cells and the new DNA that starts to come through is more um, adept and healing can occur. But even down to ley lines, I, I go around to um, certain energy spots where there are ley lines and a lot of the time when you go the energy nodes were used by our ancestors as healing centers yeah you know our ancestors knew that you know for instance stonehenge apparently now even the uh, in the uh, historians are saying that people used to come here sit in there and use them as as places of rest and healing and recharging and you know boosting their energy um, so the earth and the rocks in the earth are emitting an electrical charge. And when you understand that and you realize that you're a receiver and transmitter of energy, then it's it's easier to understand that, um, you know, basically we're no different, just in a different format, emitting a frequency, magnetizing things to us. Like you just said previously, I don't know whether it's me who's just magnetizing things. We are magnets. Mm -hmm. Our frequency is magnetizing and do you remember years ago people used to say oh we're not on the same wavelength yeah that's <laughs> correct yeah. that is absolutely correct yeah now you get I, it I love those like those little incidents of where we have these little phrases in in language that have um you know they've they've stuck you know they've stuck through all of the generations and we say them without really thinking about them but yeah like you say you know how often will we have said we're not on the same wavelength but we've not actually thought hang on a minute we're talking about frequency and we're understanding that we're on a different frequency we're we're looking at things differently we're feeling things differently yeah massively massively and of course then of course then you go into the color spectrum and the color spectrum has frequency to it and again if you're talking about language people used to say you know they're red with rage or green with envy or yeah. feeling blue and these are throwaway comments just like you've just said that yeah. you know basically we never really give a great deal of attention to but they show that our ancestors were more in tune and yeah. had a more of an understanding of what was happening so yeah going to these energy put places in the world and also yourself you know if you go on holiday and you go somewhere like turkey and then you go somewhere like thailand the energy and the people there feel so different yeah, yeah. so why is that it's because the energy of the land the rocks is emitting a different vibratory frequency yeah. that's creating a collective consciousness in accordance with the frequency that's being delivered from the from the rocks and the earth yeah uh, out into the atmosphere which uh, I, I, love. I love yeah no it's it's um it is amazing when you I mean even like you were saying about just even within your own country and culture you visit different landscapes I mean we, we, we've talked on a few you, you mentioned the mountains in particular being powerful to you but you you touched very briefly there on ley lines which I think um perhaps in in the UK we're we're a little bit familiar with because of sites like uh, Stonehenge it's it's sort of a quite ingrained in our culture even if people don't perhaps think about it too deeply but they they have you know it's quite a, a common ley lines is something that a lot of people will have heard of even if they don't understand what they are um and I don't know if you want to just share a little bit more about um because you mentioned nodes but people might not know what they are so I don't know if you just want to yeah, just yeah absolutely Okay, so um, I'm quite new to ley lines in as much as I'm only just starting to research them. I've read an awful lot about them and uh, a great book, if you're interested in this kind of thing, is The Spine of Albion, which is written by Gary Bickcliffe and Caroline Hoare. And um, they explain about the energy of the land and how the basalt starts to push through. And they've been there for millions of years. And if you look at like um, birds use them to fly, when they're, oh, okay. uh, you know, they they fly on certain lay lines and what have you. But within the earth, these ley lines run in a straight line. And then where they cross over, that then becomes quite a poignant area of energy. It becomes what, like a node, they call it a node, which is where it's quite a powerful energy spot, like Stonehenge, yeah. which is on the Michael line. 
And um, I've recently been to uh, a seminar and gone up to um, Northumberland because there's um, a holy axis ley line there that runs from mm-hmm. Bamberg Castle um, and through quite a few places there. So what happens when you sit on them is you, you, you start to feel really relaxed, really rejuvenated. A smile appears on your face without you knowing why you just sit there and you you sort of just start smiling it's like why why am I smiling there's nothing to smile at but you have this really good feeling inside of you like it's great to be alive and 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 it's not stimulated by an event um a reaction or anything to a story or anything it's just a natural surge of energy that comes through your body and makes you want to smile and it makes you feel good so the ley lines were acknowledged by our ancestors and like I said previously they were used and churches were built on um, and famous places were built on these energy lines because these were known to be places of power yeah Um, okay and when we say power, I'm talking about power to re-energize you yeah. when you're depleted of energy. So you just sit there and, you know, so if ever anybody has been to Stonehenge or been to uh, the Tor in Glastonbury um, or even sat in a church yeah. for a length of time, the reason it was called sacred ground is because they knew where these crossing of energy lines were and that they were very powerful places where you could reconnect to your own inner world and pray if that's your thing or meditate or heal or just take time out from society whatever it is that you feel you need to do but they became sacred places because really it is quite sacred isn't it when you get time to um to yourself to be in that silence which is of course that nature but you do you just start it's quite funny really because you're sitting there and all of a sudden you're smiling like what am I smiling at (laughs) yeah (laughs) I think um it's I mean for a lot of people um the word sacred has has been is they have a connotation with it around religion don't they so uh, sometimes it it stirs up uh difficult feelings for people but I I like the way that you're you're just saying you know bring whatever feels comfortable to you but just realize it's it's a place where you can I, well you're like you said you just feel rejuvenated connected power you know or oh, it's healing isn't it I think perhaps yes. healing is a better word than power in for our modern language and interpretation Absolutely. of what what they are it's um a place of coming home it and, is um, it's a place to restore your energy and you know I feel that restoration of energy is for want of a better word sacred it's yeah. it's a connection to the energy that you are the divine energy that you are and whatever connotation you want to put to it you know I, I I'm not of no religion but to me sacred means being in in full health and being happy and valuing my life and my place here on earth so to me that that's what sacred means but I do understand definitions color our uh, understanding of things don't they yeah I think um you just said something there as well um which which stood out to me and um something about uh part of why I I started this podcast in particular was that I find a lot of people who care about the natural world often feel powerless and um they feel like you know they they feel hopeless as a result that they can't do anything to help so it's I find it quite interesting that actually um, we're talking now about these sites that they can <laughs> they can go to and they can reconnect Absolutely. to their power and actually how by reconnecting to the earth you can actually help her as well so it's it's a really I just love love the sort of the synergy of of that um the way you were talking there and absolutely um, yeah. and and you know really for me these places are um clusters sacred places where you know people used to twist and manipulate words and you know think things with religions sort of got distorted a little bit but you know if you go and sit into a church if you have a church near you and what have you where there's no religious ceremony going in and you just have some free time and you've got maybe half an hour to just sit quietly and you know whatever your beliefs are doesn't really matter but just sitting in that space and observing the vibration that's in the actual place it yeah. feels so beautiful and when you're emanating that out into the atmosphere 
you know we were talking before about being a magnet the more at ease with yourself you are the less diseased you are likely to be so finding places like churches like i say let's put religion to one side but you know the church if it's built on a, an energy node then you know going in there on your own in your own time and just sitting on an energy node revitalizing yourself helping you become more at ease with life more at ease with yourself more at ease with everything then that energy you take it away with you and it's yeah. it's emanating it's out into the atmosphere and it's yeah. helping other people yeah. as well as you yeah I am um, you're talking about a church there and it was reminding me of an experience I had probably about 15 years ago or so and I was actually traveling in Ethiopia and we were on um, Lake Tana, which is um, often reputed to be the source of the Nile. And um, there was a tiny little island and on this island was a, a monastery. And it was one of those places where I had your sort of mountain experience. This site, I'm, you know, I, I couldn't tell you for definite that there were ley lines there, but the, the feeling of it was was very much um one of of sacredness and the imprint of the place and it's it's interesting because um you know even 15 years later I'm like I could you know sort of close my eyes and think and I can remember the feeling of being in that place in my body um and like and like I say that's 15 years ago I've never once been back and it, it it leaves an imprint on you and I think what's also important to remember is that we leave our own imprints there as well don't we absolutely massively and the more at ease you can become you know you're talking about going and helping mother earth and i have a story to share that is basically about how you know there was a lady and she was uh picking up some polystyrene that was in a river and the she said this is terrible somebody's thrown a polystyrene into a river and the man said to him put that polystyrene cup back into the river and she said what and he said, unless you can pick that cup up with love in your heart, Mother Earth, instead of putting anger out into the atmosphere, then you are not being in service to Mother Earth. And that, for me, was a massive message of realizing the importance of living at ease and in love, yeah. because the atmosphere is is full of anger and full of, uh, you know, the stress and anxiety that is happening in the world at the moment. So if you can become an advocate for Mother Earth and find that peace and that ease within you, you'll be in a massive service to yourself and yeah. to the planet yeah it's I mean not to say it's easy it's <laughs> to not. do that <laughs> but, no, and, but if um, you go sit on an energy line or yeah. start working with crystals or do your thing with nature yeah. then you'll find it easier yeah I think but I, I love that I think it's um it's very it's a very difficult um situation in our society at the moment isn't it people are quite often become very polarized there's a lot of judgment and um and through that there are a lot of um you know the heavier emotions I don't want to say they're bad or because they're they're not you know all emotions have their place and are needed in time it's about moving through the frequencies and, and not getting stuck um Absolutely. but yeah I, I love that that actually if you can you know have a different it's intention isn't it really that's what it comes back to it's being aware of of what your intention is what your frequency is what your yes, wavelength is at the, the time that you're doing things and how you can pro process your own things as well isn't it that's that's really yeah. it as well yeah absolutely and you know for me I found my connection to mother earth and nature through the crystals and the rocks that doesn't mean I don't feel the trees and you know my heart is is open a lot more than it was when I was younger because I went through the process of being this eased mm -hmm. and when I had to self inquire what's going on how can I heal myself look at all the you know things that were going on in my life and make those changes to help me and the crystals really helped me observe what was going on within me and find the right frequency to be able to become more at ease with myself and with harmony and for that I understand now where a lot of people are that you know that dis-ease that you're talking about it's not easy to break free from but you know you've just got to start reconnecting to whatever it is that you know yeah. draws you into yeah. nature and and the natural way of being 
Yeah, and I'm my I mean my first experience really with crystals, I think I was probably only like five or or six years old. And actually my mum went to a, a crystal healer. So we're we're talking <laughs> quite a while ago, sort of 35 years ago. Wow. Um, which at that time it was it was very um niche, <laughs> shall we say not not many people really used or considered it. Um but your own journey with crystals actually really sort of took flight when you had your own um illness that you were trying to to help, weren't you? Um, yeah, absolutely. I started um it, I was in my very early twenties, so it's 40 years ago now. Oh my goodness. And um I uh I had and originally I had uh, asthma but I wasn't born with asthma and it came through stress so I had difficulty breathing I went to the doctors and I ended up where my tubes were closing and 999 lights into the light into the hospital and they told me that you know they gave me this medication and said basically you'll be on this for life now and yeah, you know okay. it's touch and go whether or not you'll you know be able to breathe properly yeah. And then I met a lady who gave me a crystal and I was so desperate that, you know, okay, let's give it a go. I'm taking this medication. It's lose. making me yeah. ill. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I had a go uh, with this crystal, did what she said and started to get better and then wondered if it was a placebo effect, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And then started to research it. And it's almost like you said before, you know, when you place an intention to know more about something, the universe gets on board and starts to send you things. So it was almost like the crystals took over because I found a crystal course. And then uh, I, I really felt inspired to start to write it down because I, I realized how much this had helped me, not just a little bit, but hugely helped me. And so I wanted to help other people and wrote a course and yeah, the, the journey just went on and on where it's like, look, listen, we're frequencies. And when we get the frequency back right in our body, then our body has the ability to heal itself. So mm -hmm. it was quite a, a journey um, working through what's going on inside of me. And I think, you know, I had plenty to go at, should we say, there was lots of fears that came up. There was lots of all sorts of things, anger and, you know, yeah. all these different frequencies that were within me that came up for healing and the crystals just guided me all the way through it. And I'm forever grateful. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people, I mean, I know myself included, that they come to these um, complementary um, sort of therapies as a you know in a in a place of desperation don't they they've often you know they've they've tried the sort of mainstream medical and um been left with like you said just generally some medication to try and help manage the symptoms as best as possible sometimes with greater or, uh, greater or lesser degrees of success and they're in that place of well I've got nothing to lose so I'll give it exactly. a go and um I think it's amazing actually just how much there is that out there that can help people that they just don't realize. And it's, it is a shame that in our society, it, it tends to be a last resort for people yeah. rather than actually a lot of the power can be in preventative medicine, really, can't it? In, in helping, like you said, work through things before Absolutely. it actually becomes yeah. disease. Um, and crystals are very helpful and powerful in that, aren't they? Massively. And I think, you know, people say to me, you know, with the state of the NHS and what have you. And I said, you know, for me, I think this is meant to be happening because it's helping people realise that they can take control of their own well-being instead yeah. of relying on somebody else to fix them yeah. and recognise, you know, become more aware. How do I feel? Is this making me happy? Am I, am I happy? Am I content? Am I comfortable with myself? If not, what's going on? And, you know, really get to know your internal world as well as what's happening in your external world. And then you become master of your own destiny, really. You start to recognize that, you know, I mean, for me, uh, I'm very fortunate. My immune system's quite good. And, you know, I haven't had colds, flus, anything, because I've maintained. It's a little bit like, I've, you know, I've looked after myself. Yeah, yeah. And it's like your car, <laughs> you know, you, exactly. you, you, you take your car for a service. And we uh, spend and, more and, on our <laughs> cars than we do on ourselves, don't we? It's like, yeah. well, we've got to do this, that, and the other for the car. And yet, you know, I haven't yeah. had a, a, a treatment or looked after myself yeah. properly. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, you haven't you haven't te- checked your tire pressures recently. That's it. Yeah, we need to say that, <laughs> yeah. don't we? Yeah. yeah, no, it's um it is though, isn't it? I think it is sad. And again, it actually comes back to that that idea of of powerlessness again, doesn't it? That society has I guess in almost indoctrinated us to basically hand our power away to others, like you were saying, like, you know, you you don't sort of preemptively do things with your health. You know, you you wait until you get sick and then you go to the doctor for them to tell you what's wrong and to do tests and to tell you how you should be feeling and, and how your trajectory will continue from this point as well. And and it I, I don't know, it is it's this sort of reconnecting, I guess, with with our own innate wisdom, isn't it? Of um and the wisdom of the plants and the animals and beings around us and nature Massively. just you know you you begin to realize that actually you're not powerless and no. you know you you can be aware of what's you know oh that that's starting to not feel good well I can adjust something now and it doesn't escalate and and manifest to the to another level massively and I totally agree and I mean Maybe again, it's just the people that are magnetizing around of me. But you know, the people that are youngsters that have got children, they're bringing them up with the idea of you know, check in with yourself. Is this really what you want to do? Are you happy? Does your body like what you're eating, or are you just eating sugar? You know. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's really important to ask your body. You know, is this something that I'm enjoying? And and I used to be a landlady years and years ago of a hotel. Oh, and nice. I had a diet of chocolate and chips. That was yeah. my diet. <laughs> I never had any energy. I was always tired. And working with the crystals, you purify. You don't realize, but, you know, naturally the crystals talk to um, give you a low tolerance for things that are not feeding your body and your soul and your mind mm-hmm. and everything. And eventually over a period of time, if you'd have told me, you know, 20 years ago that I would end up, you know, becoming a vegetarian, drinking water, not drinking alcohol and things like that. I'm like, oh, you've got the wrong person. <laughs> That's never going to happen. But it did. Yeah. It did because the crystals helped purify my body. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it was just a natural movement into that. Not I have to do this, but just no, that tastes awful. This is what I want. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's important that we do, you know, place more awareness on our health and our wellness and our well-being emotionally, mentally and physically, because at the moment we're under so much mental pressure um, that, you know, that stimulation that we were talking about earlier is affecting our minds. And I do a lot of drumming okay, um, yeah. because our beats per second in the mind the BPS in the mind at the moment is not getting to um, a low enough rate for us to properly switch off. So because we're not properly switching off, our autoimmune system is playing up and our body isn't um, managing to rest to the depth it needs to, to regenerate and rejuvenate. Um, And yeah, so there's lots going on, isn't there? Yeah, it's I mean, you talk about drumming, but, um, and again, it's, you know, for some people, they'd be like, oh, drumming. But actually, if you think about it in terms of, of music, we accept like some music makes us feel, you know, energized. Some music makes us feel rested, like it puts a smile on our face. It reminds us of experience we've had and memories and things. And again, it's it comes back to this frequency That's idea it. again. And, yeah. and the fact that, you know, it's, I mean, obviously, drumming is is more sort of um, from the shamanism side of of your your influence. Um, but actually, for for people at home who might be listening who have, haven't got their own drum, but they could just it just find some music. There's some great music out there. There's um, a lot of um, people involved with sound healing and things, isn't there? That do specific frequencies as well. And it's about what fi- feels good to you, isn't it? It's like you can't. It's not yeah. prescriptive. One size fits all. But it's about feeling what music makes you feel better and and That's right. more settled and calm. The thing with drumming is it's monotonous. It doesn't have anything that your mind can get involved in. It's got no tune with it. Yeah, okay. And that is the key to getting that beats per second down. Right. Almost like your your mind gets bored. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> there's no stimulant going on here. And eventually we drop to yeah. those frequencies where the mind is not 
counting, listening to the rhythm, listening to the, and there's nothing going on in your mind. And that state of being, oh, is just amazing. And I guess um, for people who've not experienced it before, they get, they have to um, work through the sort of resistance that <laughs> their mind yeah. is going to come up with. <laughs> to yeah. be like, no, we're not going to switch off. It's not, it's not going to happen. Um, and it, so it, it might be a, a sort of challenge the first time that, or the first few times that they attempt attempt it. To do it, absolutely. Because the mind, like I said previously, we're so used to all these stimulants um, you know, the, there's televisions everywhere, there's radios everywhere, there's something to do all the time. We're not used to having nothing happening in our brain. So finding things that help calm all that down, like certain crystals will help calm that down, um, you know, drumming, going out in nature and feeling, finding that frequency. And um, if someone hasn't had any experience with crystals before and they wanted to um, to sort of start finding out more or maybe to experiment a little bit themselves, um, have you got some suggestions for, for people who've, who've never had any exposure to, to crystals before? Uh, yeah. Um, so if you're interested, you know, it, normally uh, people are drawn to crystals because of the way they look. You know, it's like, oh, isn't that pretty? And yeah. how how nice is that? What a lovely color it is and what have you. But then ask yourself, uh, my husband's a jeweler by trade. Okay. And so <laughs> we used to have a jewelry shop and people would come in the shop and some people would say, isn't that a beautiful ruby? And yeah. somebody would say, isn't that a wonderful emerald? So you're drawn naturally to a color yeah. that is at your frequency. So just by saying, you know, oh, that color is beautiful. You're already saying that makes me feel good because yeah, it's okay. beautiful yeah. so if that's the case and you just literally pick a crystal because it's beautiful to you and remember that there was a lady who liked the ruby and the lady who liked the emerald so it's not beautiful to everybody yeah. so the fact that you think something is beautiful is making you feel good you know carry it around with you but there is you know uh ideally you want to because crystals are emitting a frequency they absorb um, the energy in the atmosphere and they transmit energy out into the atmosphere the same as we do so ideally you want to cleanse your crystal okay and there's a few ways that you can do this if you go onto our website there's quite a lot of uh, educational videos on there that yeah. will um, help is it okay if I say the website yeah, no please do I'll put it in the show notes as well but um yeah please please share your okay. website so it's uh, www.britishacademyofcrystalhealing.com and if you go into advice then there are lots of videos on there offering you advice free free of charge because I, I believe you know the more of us that know about this the more chance we have of surviving <laughs> these <laughs> crazy times so if you are interested and you want to know a little bit more please go on there and use that free information but you cleanse your crystal you can just run it under a tap you know there is lots of different ways that you can cleanse crystals and make sure that the frequency is clapped clear so think of when we're talking about frequencies some think about somebody who's hitting a note that's flat okay yeah as opposed to somebody who's hitting a note that's clean and beautiful yeah. so you don't want a flat vibration yeah. going into your energy field you want to make sure that it's kept to the correct frequency so that it's doing the best it can yeah. for you I guess and a, just observe another analogy would be the sort of radio dial that's just slipped a little bit that's and you've got one, a bit yeah. of static coming in rather than hearing the the radio station exactly as you you want to yeah absolutely and and the same with any therapy it is again about intention so you know set your intention what would you like to get from this crystal you know do you want to become more relaxed so the basic rule of thumb is that we have as like a hot and a cold colors so any colors okay. that are green blue or purple are going to relax you any colors that are red orange or yellow are going to stimulate you okay. so if you need stimulating and you want you know more energy or you want to be uh inspired or anything like that then in the red yellow and orange spectrum it's very difficult in a couple of minutes to explain what crystals yeah. can do but you know yeah. as a basic rule of thumb yeah. 
and if you An feel introduction. that yeah. yeah yeah and if you feel that you you know you're overwhelmed um because a lot of people at the moment feel overwhelmed you know they've got so many things going on their mental energy is so scattered that you yeah. know it's like i'm trying to do this i'm trying to do this i'm trying to do this and i haven't got two minutes and they get into bed and they can't switch off because the mind hasn't managed to get down to the correct frequency then you want to be working in the blue purple or green spectrum yeah. because those are the ones that are going to be calming and soothing but again we do have blogs and podcasts and things like that on the website to offer help to people who are just starting out with crystals yeah. um, and, and just carrying it around. And often, you know, if people say they can't feel the crystal, that's because maybe you need to put it on a pulse point. So put it on yeah. your wrist because that is where you're most sensitive. So by just putting your crystal on your wrist or in your elbow, the crease of your elbow where you have a pulse, chances are that you're going to feel the energy a little bit more clearly than if you're just holding it in your hand. So there are just a few tips and yeah, uh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> no it's it's lovely because some you know they are so powerful and I think but sometimes people just maybe just want to sort of try a little bit themselves before they they sort of dive in or maybe because you can you can go to crystal um therapists as well and they they yeah. can do healings and things with you can't they and, and give you advice so that's another option for people if they they want to take it further and and you do you do trainings and things as well don't you you, you yeah. train through your school yes well. we do uh, we do introductory courses, Crystals for Wellness is what we call it, which is a six-week course. And it just introduces you to energy spots on the body where you're more likely to feel the energy and have a better reaction of your body rather than just carrying them in a pouch or sticking them in your pocket. Or sometimes people say, oh, I've got a crystal. It's in my purse in the locker. Well, it ain't yeah. doing any good in the purse in your locker. <laughs> Um, so if you're a person, the locker kind of person and you want to know a little bit more and uh, work with the crystals, then the crystal wellness course will give you introductions on how to use crystals, where to put them and give you techniques on what to do. Uh, or if you are a crystal enthusiast and you want to make a career from it, like uh, you were saying about crystal therapy and everything, we offer fully accredited courses to give you um, a qualification that you can get insurance with and um, be become a therapist and make a career from it uh, but we do train you uh, how to use your own senses to become more astutely aware of frequencies and sensations yeah. and interpret the vibrations better and what crystals work to bring balance and harmony in I think um like we've we've talked we've talked about it if, if you sort of round the houses points and it's about um learning to trust what you're feeling as well isn't it and um we're taught quite early on in our society to basically dismiss our sort of intuition and our sort of what we feel oh that feels good that doesn't feel good and we're we're told sort of to ignore it so a big thing of, of what you're talking about there is actually reconnecting to those sort of intuitive nudges isn't it of of understanding it is but the intuition gets blocked by our mindset so you know the, the neolithic rock that was saying to me about how the mind induces emotions um you know through the stories that you know so for instance when i'm teaching on my course i'm like right throw away the book i'm just going to pass information to you and you've got to decipher whether what i'm saying is correct so if you're if you're being led by what you've been told is true that's going to mask your intuition yeah. whereas if you're being led by what can I feel from this yeah. how does it make me feel and understand yeah. the feelings instead of the thoughts and the stories behind things then your intuition will really come to life because like I said before you know if somebody tells you a story you know there's dying donkeys in Africa please will you give to our charity yeah. it's like oh that's so sad I'm going to give and your intuition is underneath somewhere not being given a voice because you've been masked by the emotional manipulation of the story yeah. so learning to connect to that pure intuition which is what you're talking about and being led by it you know I don't know whether it, there are dead diet donkeys dying in Africa but you know at the end of the day what I do know is my heart is I hope that's not the case and you know if yeah. I'm in a position to give I will do but 
recognizing that your intuition can get masked by the stories that we are playing and running internally yeah. creating emotional disturbances yeah i think um it's really a lot of what we hear around the environment as well is is those negative dialogues yeah. um you know that really pull at your heartstring but also make you feel um you know very down and hopeless and um and it, it's disempowering isn't it you know we've, we've talked about power and, and it is disempowering and and I, I think what I wanted to do through the podcast was actually create a place where people could feel more hopeful and inspired and and sort of find people that were actually out there making changes and be like well actually I can I can either support them because they're doing something positive and you're it, it the intention then is very different isn't it if you're looking at someone and going wow look what they've achieved I want to support them to do more of that rather than looking at it from oh my goodness you know like there was this awful you know the tree for the sycamore gap tree for example yeah. was cut down and you know from that it, you know it's it, it is a very it's a subtlety isn't it and I think yes. that's what crystals are as well isn't it is it's, yes. it's learning to just have awareness for for these subtle frequencies these subtle energies these little subtle shifts of of how your your intention is is going out into the world massively massively and to become more empowered sometimes the mind then play stories of like you know well I'm a really bad person because I've not given to x y and z and that it's like then uh, it's like a snowball effect mm. it's just getting bigger and bigger and you're creating more disharmony in your inner world because of your stories that you've been told and the programming and the emotional manipulation and the mindsets um so getting free from that sometimes really does like you say you know cause us to get lost a little bit maybe sometimes and just say you know I, I I feel so bad when I listen to these stories but when I don't listen to them that makes me a bad person no yeah. it doesn't yeah. um you know it's it's learning to disassociate from uh things that are not boosting your energy and helping you feel at ease with life yeah and, and recognizing your reality you know if I saw um you know a, a donkey on the street I go over and help it but you know my reality is I actually don't know whether this is genuine or or not so therefore you know unless I'm willing to get on a plane and go out there and have a look which yeah. I don't feel called to do doesn't make me a bad person yeah yeah and I'm not suggesting on any level that these charities are trying to misinform us I'm just saying that you know the way that the information is being put across is creating a lot of emotional disturbances within people which is yeah. what you're saying so I'm yeah. not suggesting on any level that anybody is trying to uh to do this intentionally but this is what sometimes is happening yeah and um I think sort of going back on on that um we we talked a lot about the the ley lines earlier and um geopathic stress and actually um you i i was i think i was listening to one of your podcasts actually and you were talking about how um there's been incidences of where people have gone and done like crystal gridding and healing on on areas and the impacts have been quite profound I was quite surprised by by what you were saying and about like basically neighborhoods that were like you know quite sort of um shunned I suppose for want yes. of a better word like completely transformed I, and I was just amazing so I don't know if you want to share a little bit more about the research you've done on that and and what might be involved if people felt called to maybe try and, and do something in their local patch to to help okay yeah um, absolutely so I um, recently moved back from Spain and have a new, well, it's not a new house, it's an old house, but it's new to me. And when we moved in, I like to work out which way the energy of the land is flowing because there is a current of energy running through the land. So I use dowsing rods and they're quite easy to use. Um, you just stand at the main entrance of your house and you put your dowsing rods in together and find out which way the energy of the land is flowing and as you walk forward with awareness of the land below you you can determine which way the energy of the land is flowing and then you go back to the door and you ask which is the way of the life force 
of my life force and mm. the life around it that's living in the house flowing and a lot of people find that the energy of the land is flowing in one direction and the life flow is going in another direction okay. And years and years ago, people used to say, I'm just going to go and see the lay of the land. Yeah, of course. I'm yeah. going to work out yeah. the lay of the land. <laughs> yeah. And working out the lay of the land means, am I going with life or am I pushing against it a little bit? Yeah. So then you can use crystals to grid your life force to match with the lay of the land. So for me, I put two crystals facing into the house so the life force starts to go to the same direction as the energy from the land. Yeah. Now, if you then start to, and you want to go to your local park or into uh, your garden, for instance, and just again, use your dowsing rods and find a place where the energy is basically a ley line near you because there are major ley lines and then there are the smaller ley lines that are running off. And when you find that place, then just go and do a little ceremony. And just as so, for instance, for me, I went into our local park, which is literally behind my house. I'm very fortunate. And I found an area that I felt was appropriate for me to do this. And I stood there and I just stood there filling my heart with love, thinking about everything that I appreciate in my life and how fortunate I am and how wonderful it is and how abundant I am, you know, and how much. I am grateful for everything that I have in my life and raise that energy within me and then use my intention to push that energy of gratitude, love and everything into the earth and ask that it go out to the area. Now, research led me to find that some people that had been doing this had been finding that the, the non-affluent areas suddenly had become sought after areas to live in. Yeah. Now, the area where I live, the, the house that I'm living in has got a nice energy in front of it. But behind it, there are a lot of people that are, you know, they're, they're, they're on benefits and they have children. Struggling, struggling yes, with life. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, they're, they're, their houses are not as well kept as others because of whatever reason. Yeah. So after doing this, they're obviously not very affluent people. After doing this the government the the local council relayed the roads mm -hmm. on the roads of the houses where i knew that they needed and i'd been directing the energy to they also all got grants in the area it was just absolutely mm -hmm. crazy to realize how energetically when you set your intention find that vibration within you i used crystals as well to help me put into the earth i just gave them back to yeah. mother earth pushed them into mother earth yeah. said what I was doing did it ceremoniously and yeah I noticed immediately that you know the area even in the area where I was living started to get some more you know support yeah. financially yeah. and the area seems to be improving oh that's so that's um I that's just actually given me goosebumps listening to that story it's just a phenomenal um someone that I followed for quite a long time is um a lady called Lynn McTaggart who um, does a lot of scientific research into the power of intention. Um, yes. You know, she works with world-renowned scientists at some of the, the top universities um, in the States and, and around the world. Um, so there's a, there's a huge amount of scientific research being done into this this field of of intention and, and how you can um, impact that around you. But I love I love what you were saying because it was, you know, the the it's very simple but so profound and actually you know a, a lot of people that are in situations where they're struggling it's hard for them to you know to expect them to care about the environment and things like that because they're struggling to even you know perhaps feed themselves feed their children get just get through each day yeah. and actually by you know sending that healing energy and intent towards them it's like you know by elevating them um, what do they say a rising tide lifts all boats doesn't it and massively you know and massively. then they you know I've, I've talked with quite a few other people about how you know as consumers we have the ability to help the environment by our buying choices and and obviously if you're struggling financially it's it's very difficult to make those empowering um buying decisions but you know if if you're 
getting a little bit more affluence and things you can you can start caring about about things beyond your immediate survival basically isn't it you can step out of that survival instinct so I think I just love that I love and you know anyone listening could can simply just go out you know even if it's standing in your garden so it's just sort of your immediate neighbors and just you know holding that beautiful intent in their heart um and the yeah. results really are are quite quick because you know I'd, I'd been maybe every day for a week I'd set my intention to you know to do this and after literally a week I, I the road had been closed off and I remember thinking why have they closed that road off and they'd taken all the tarmac up and the pavements up which weren't in very good order at all and they were repairing them and my heart was singing because I recognized that you know the work that I'm doing is having an effect. Now, some people can dismiss this as mere coincidence. Yeah. But, you know, the amount of times that this has been proven, and because I teach, I have been teaching since 2004, and all of the tutors, uh, all of the students on the course have to do case studies and, and doing this kind of work. And that you can imagine each course has around about 40 or 50 students on. So if that time 20 years worth yeah. of evidence that this kind of work works yeah. it makes a difference that your intention is is actually creating a reality for people then my goodness you you then start to reclaim some of your power that you may think you've lost yeah and i think um to take to to bring that back to i mean obviously you know people and and humanity and and community is hugely important and you know like what you're doing there is wonderful but also in regards to our relationship with earth as well we we can you know we can go in and offer her the same healing and i think it it speaks to what you were talking about about um you know charities and we've mentioned a few times about the dialogue and you know being out there and and being angry and shouting and and demanding and and focusing as well our intent on the decline and the negative is you know that's the intention that we're putting out there so actually yeah. you know finding the ability within yourself to to step back not not to not have awareness that there are issues but to step back and and think of ways forward you know <laughs> and even just to hold the love isn't it you know because even if you don't know the way forward but you you hold that intention for love with love of mm -hmm. things moving to a better place yes. and envisioning that um is just so powerful i think one of the things um you know that i really like about my work is that the person that benefits so much from it is me yeah you know it's like i'm the best you know, I, I lead by example. I don't just preach this. I do what I, I'm, I'm sharing with people. And my energy levels are amazing. You know, I feel younger now than I did when I was in my 20s. I've got so much more energy now, you know. Um, I play sports. I go dancing. I do, you know, my body is, is, is really, compared to other people of my age, in a really good, uh, you know, way of being able to help my soul enjoy this life while I'm I'm still on this planet. And also, when I see that what I'm doing is helping other people, and you know, it, it's it's food for the soul, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you feel so good that you're able to do this kind of work, benefit from it yourself. The planet benefits, people benefit. It's it's wonderful yeah it's that's the thing isn't it it's not it's not either or i think we we have that that vision in society a lot isn't it is that if we're doing this then it means we can't do something else and you know if i'm helping someone else then i'm not helping myself or i'm helping myself i'm not helping someone else and the we and it comes back to that polarity again doesn't it and actually yeah. that's again it's a story isn't it it's a story that we has been constructed within society and actually it's one we need to let go of and we can all rise together and rise our, raise our vibration together and by you working on yourself raising your own vibration you know you, you send that out and the people around you benefit the beings around you benefit you know your the plants in your garden the the birds the insects everything um and yeah it's it's it sounds selfish but actually it's the least selfish thing you can do absolutely yeah oh well Jackie it sounds 
it seems like a, a a nice place to sort of look at rounding up but I don't know if there's just I like to just ask my my guests at the end if there's anything else just that they feel on their heart today that they they would like to share or in the last thoughts that they would like to leave with people um well to be honest with you we covered so many subjects this morning um <laughs> uh, Fiona it has been amazing I really really loved it and you know for me I would like to see future generations you know I, I'm I, I'm a great believer in the ancestors, connecting to your ancestors, because, you know, they're part of your DNA, they're part of who you are and what have you. And, you know, recognizing that we live on this planet for such a short length of time in comparison with, you know, the trees and everything yeah. else, you know, it's it's really, really important that we realize that we're linked in a chain. And yeah. so I'm doing this not just for me. I'm doing it for the, all those that went before me and maybe went through struggles and all those that are coming after me to make sure that this planet is, well, I'm going to hope when I leave that I feel like I've done my part in making this planet a better world filled yeah. with love and hope and peace. And, you know, if that's you and you want the same, there's a lot of people that are living in their heart chakra, but just don't know how to do anything like you were saying. And you want to get involved with crystals, then I'd be more than happy to help point you in the right direction. Or even if it's, you know, going into something else in nature, just find it. And remember, you know, it's it's actually a gift to be here. Yeah. I, that's beautiful absolutely beautiful Jackie I just um, I'm going to just say for my listeners who obviously can't see you but you've actually had your hand on your heart the whole time that you were sharing that message and I think that's just a, a potent thing for people to remember to do is if you're struggling to, or wondering what you can do to put your hand on your heart and just take a moment and just see what wisdom your heart has to share because it normally will guide you well but um yeah thank you Jackie it's been an absolutely beautiful conversation meandering along ley lines I think I feel <laughs> and um yeah being guided on on ways that we can help help everyone around us not just not just earth and nature but but also the communities and, and people around us so thank you for your your time and wisdom today it's been an absolute pleasure it's been my honor thank you so much Thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life. I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends, leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.